Big Stepper News reacts. Let's get to the content. Yeah. Case, well, case. Having, well, Cassie being strategic, she got her money, and once they got her money, the feds double back to her, and she's letting it be criminal a whole nother way, because she's cooperating with the feds right now. So, so you think her she paid case? to get her money, bro? Ain't nobody, bro. You know, it usually take a month, for a couple years fighting nigga to get that kind of money, right? You know what I'm saying? She was playing for her bag. She got it. So you believe her statements in her civil case will be used in this criminal case, even though it was closed and it was settled? Well, it ain't going to be the statement. It's going to be, um, they're going to probably use her as a, as, a, as a character witness, right? To show that he participates in these type of activities. Right, right. What's up, Nut? Yeah, I'll be back. All right, no All right, so Rosetta, go ahead and play some more of that audio, and then we're going to get to the actual paperwork. Go ahead, Rosetta. Somebody keep dropping me. Could you please? Yeah, stop dropping, Samantha. Rosetta. Stop dropping Samantha. Yeah, Samantha's her audio, so don't touch Samantha. I have no indication as to what's happening in California or Department of Justice. Why do I say that? Federal and the federal drug trafficking, because of the multiple jurisdictions, could implicate federal right crimes, Issues, yeah. as are indicated in the complaint. Because when you go state to state, then the feds have to get involved because then it's interstate. You taught me that. I don't right. know. Um, what are what are the legal claims that, that she is alleging against Sean Puffy Combs? So they are numerous, right? <clears throat> what happens is when you file a complaint, you put what, what's called causes of action. And the okay. causes of action relate to what we talked about in terms of sex trafficking <laughs> that is in multiple jurisdictions, as I noted, whether it were Miami, whether it was California, okay. whether it was in New York, right, taking Miss Ventura and having her engage uh, in various acts with male prostitutes, according to the complaint, mm -hmm. uh, issues relating to sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual abuse, other types of misconduct. And so there are eight in total relating to issues in okay, New York. Okay, pause it right there. Relating to issues in California as well to buttress what the claims are in the complaint just quickly the defense in the all right pause it right there like boom so if y'all heard that just like wax said the civil the, the feds picked it up why because of the claims that she made that said oh well he took me here he took me she took me here so even though the civil was settled out the feds had to pick it up because of the allegations so her being a character witness her being a witness that, that that's that's very likely Right, because the only reason why the feds picked it up is because of those statements in her civil action lawsuit against Sean Puff Daddy Combs. So now we're gonna go ahead and get to the paperwork. What everybody's been waiting for. Ion, are you ready? Yeah, you want me to start there? Yeah, start at the start at the facts. So, factual allegations, line 18. In 2003, Miss Doe was a 17-year-old um, 11th grader residing in a suburb of uh, suburb of Detroit, Michigan. At the time, Mr. Combs was 34 years old, twice the age of Miss Doe, and one of the most well-known, influential music artists of all time. A decade earlier, Mr. Combs founded Bad Boy and installed his longtime friend, Mr. Uh, Pierre, uh, Pierre um, into the role of president. At the time, Mr. Combs had many connections to Michigan, including among others to the Black Mafia family, BMF, a drug trafficking and money laundering organization that is rumored to have seeded Bad Boy. According, uh, uh, accordingly, upon uh, information and belief, Mr. Combs' associates, associates include Mr. Pierre and the third assailant spent significant time in and around um, Detroit, Michigan. On one evening, spring into a spring and fall of 2003, Miss Doe was out with friends. It was not uncommon for her and her friends to frequent bars and lounges.
challenges in Detroit, in the Detroit area. Uh, certain, hold on, certain of Ms. Doe's friends were connected and uh, with people in, in the industry. On the evening hold in on, question. Real quick, Zion. So that's a 17 year old in 11th grade going to bars, correct? Yep, that's the 17 year old. Okay. Now, Reese, now, Reese. Yeah. You do understand, <clears throat> R. Kelly has educated me on why he's in the feds. He's in the feds. You know, as you know, Reek, like 32 of our states are age 16, legal age consent. Another like 12 are like um, are 18, and then the rest are 17. Right? State. Right. But the law of the land, per the feds, is 18. They don't give a fuck what the state say. So if you are fucking with somebody under the age of 16, even if it's falling under the legal age of consent statute statewide, feds could grab you and book you. Illinois dropped it on him because it was 17. Their state law is 17. Feds picked it up because she wasn't 18. Okay. So that means this girl is saying she was 16 in New York. New York legal age of consent is 17. So it's a it's a state and a federal. Well, at the violation. time, at the time she's in Detroit, and and the legal age for drinking, I don't believe is 17 in in, in the state of Michigan. What is right it? Now, the legal age. Let's see, legal age for drinking in Michigan, because for her to be at a bar or drinking. Okay, legal age for drinking in Michigan is 21 years old, so she had no business being at a it's bar. It's a violation there, and then this the same girl that went to the RCA party? Uh, I believe so. It, it, okay, the, uh, that's what she said. They got her drunk, which yeah, New York, and New then New York, they had her drunk, and then they ran a train on her. Right. So now you got state and federal violations. Right. So go ahead on. You got it. So this is it ain't it ain't looking good. Not looking good at all. That's where the state and the federal kick in at right there. Yeah, right there, bro. Ion, it's on you. All right. So on the evening in question, Miss Doe was uh, with friends in the lounge when she was approached by who later learned was Miss uh, Mr. Pierre. Uh, Mr. Pierre was with his own friends, including the third assailant. Mr. Pierre, the third assailant, and their friends were dressed in suits. Mr. Pierre repeatedly complimented Miss Doe's appearance, saying that she was hot, among other things. He began talking about his self-described best friend and brother, Mr. Combs. Specifically, Mr. Pierre continually um, stated that Mr. Combs was would love to meet Mrs. Uh, Jane Doe. Uh, Mr. Pierre even called Mr. Combs and put Miss Doe on the line. Mr. Combs told Miss Doe that he would love to meet her and that she would accompany Mr. Pierre to New York um, in the city private jet. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Pierre directed Miss Doe um, to go to the bathroom. At the lounge, once inside the bathroom, Mr. Pierre began to smoke crack cocaine from what appeared to be an aluminum can. <laughs> After he was finished smoking crack, Mr. Pierre suddenly took out his penis and demanded Miss uh, Doe suck his penis and force Mrs. Doe's head down to perform oral sex on him. After sexually ass assaulting Mrs. Doe, Mr. Pierre directed her to accompany him um accompany him uh the third assailant and the third member of their group to an airport in michigan where a uh, signature a, fix, uh, a fixed base operator had prepared a private jet to take all four of them to new york um new york city hold on I, uh, I, so at this point she, she's not she's not drugged she's she's not she's not drunk he didn't he didn't get her drunk She's claiming he forced her to put his, her head down there, right? And he's assuming that she's of age being in the bar. Correct? Correct. Okay, continue. 
All right. So upon um, information and belief, the private jet landed um, in a t- in, at uh, Teterboro Airport. Upon departing the jet, two black SUVs were awaiting for the group. Miss Doe and um, got into the SUV with Mr. Pierre and the third assailant and other members of the group went in the second SUV. The SUVs brought uh, the group to Diddy's house recording studio, a recording studio and hangout owned and operated by Miss Combs and Bad Boy. When Miss Doe arrived, uh, she was escorted into the building where she distantly uh, remembers seeing uh, a company, a sign for a company, uh, Technicolor. Upon entering the studio, Miss Doe was first encountered by Mr. Combs. At the time she arrived, a female recording artist was using the studio as Mr. Combs and her parents watched watched on she finished um up shortly after uh mrs doe arrived and left while in the studio section at of diddy's house mr combs asked mrs doe to sit on his lap to take a picture a copy of the photograph is below which we can see uh, mr combs uh mr pierre and the third assailant began to apply mrs doe a 17 year old child at the time with a uh, copious amounts of drugs and alcohol. While the evening became a blur, Mrs. Doe can recall Mr. Combs and Mr. P at the third assailant hitting uh, on her um, unnecessarily, uh, stroking her body, asking to see her ass and telling her how hot and sexy she was. Various other pictures were taken in the studio that night leaving no doubt that Mrs. Doe um, was in Mr. Combs' New York City studio and Mr. Combs on that night, um, on, and with Mr. Combs, on that night she was raped. Stop right there. Go ahead and refresh our screen. There goes the photo that's uh, in the paperwork. Um, her face is blurred out because uh, she claims that she was underage at the time. Um the, the, the photo doesn't look like she's being forced to sit down. He's not even touching her. Um, and, and she's there. Um, there's still no acknowledgement that her stating her age or anything like that. Take note that she did get on the flight after she supposedly her head was forced down uh, to Mr. Pierre or Pierre's genitals and gave him oral sex after she watched him do crack cocaine out of a can. Um, so there goes the photo right there, my PTR. Go ahead, Ion, continue. All right, so hold on. As the night wore on, the 17 year old Miss Doe became more and more inebriated, eventually to the point where uh, that she could not possibly have consented to having sex with anyone much less uh, someone twice her age. Uh, nevertheless, uh, that evening, uh, Mr. Combs directed Miss Doe to accompany him to the bathroom at the studio. Once there, Mr. Combs removed Mrs. Doe's skirt and underwear and penetrated her from behind with his penis while she hung over the sink. Mrs. Doe did not consent to having sex with Mr. Combs, but he continued thrusting. At some point, Mr. Combs turned Miss Doe around to face him. He told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to help him get off. He then turned her back around and continued to rape her. Hold on, so he, he did he ask her to squeeze his nipples because he couldn't because he couldn't uh, orgasm. That would have been yeah. Okay. He's a oh, nipple I- squeezer. <laughs> Ion, listen. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Like, you have to help me, cause I don't know. I don't. What, what is? What is that? What, what's going on? So usually, <laughs> so usually, I'll say this. Usually, people who do a lot of drugs, um, specifically like you know cocaine or um, you know do crack or something during sexual um, experiences, they would need like. Uh, like nipple piercings or slaps or things to be able to kind of arouse them to have a feeling within themselves. So that's gotcha. what that's about. Gotcha. Now listen, for those of y'all that don't know, Brother Ion. Ion's my brother. That's my brother. 
Ion is the openly queer man, right? Ion is to be respected on the hunter side. <clears throat> That's my brother. He one of the main reasons why we started to kind of get an understanding of how the community works, kind of like work hand in hand with me, because I honestly tell you, I had zero understanding of any motherfucking thing, right? So that's my brother. I see Reek the stunt, had everybody on the edge, but shit, he brought, you know, he brought somebody over here that's family. So those of y'all don't know, you ever run across Ion, you got that badge on, please don't have him calling me. I'm going to side against you. And he has a room over there. Y'all feel free to go over there and check out Ion Fix My Life. It goes up. Total different content. Great room. Let's get back to it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Wack. Um, and thank you, CEO, for, um, Reek, for having me here. So by this point, um, Mrs. Doe was coming in and out of consciousness because of the drugs and the alcohol she was given by the defendants. Her next memory was looking up onto the mirror above the sink to find that the third, third, assail, that the third assailant had replaced Mr. Combs and was raping her from behind. Mr. Combs was watching the third assailant sexually assault Mrs. Doe from a chair outside of the bathroom. At this point, Mrs. Doe mustered the energy to tell the third assailant to stop and that she did not want to be having sex with him. The third assailant did not stop and continued to rape Mrs. Doe, uh, who did not have the strength to force him off of her. After the third assailant was finished, he after the third assailant was finished, he was replaced by uh, Mr. Pierre, who began by having non con non-consensual uh, vaginal sex with Mrs. Doe before violently forcing her to give him an oral uh, give him oral sex during that later part of the sexual assault Mr. Pierre forced his penis into Mrs. Doe's mouth without her consent Mrs. Doe remembers that Mr. Pierre was sweaty and she had she and that she had difficulties breathing when uh, Mr. Pierre finished he left Mrs. Doe in the bathroom alone Mrs. Doe fell in into the fetal position um, and lay on the floor. Her vagina was um, in pain. Finally, after a period of time, Mrs. Doe get, regained her bearings. However, she could barely stand up following the gang rape and had to be helped uh, to walk out of the building and back into the car. She was taken back to the airport um, and flown back to Michigan. However, she was very, she has very limited uh, recollection of the, her transport home and only remembers being in her uh, in her car um, sometimes early in the morning. However, her underwear was missing. As a result of being raped by Mr. Combs, Mr. Pierre, and the third of Salem, Miss, uh, Miss Doe suffered um, significant emotional distress and feels, uh, feels of shame and uh, shame that have plagued her life um, and personal relationships for 20 years. Okay. So, you're under the influence of a number of different drugs. Uh, you're under, you, you've been drinking alcohol. You black out. You don't know what's going on. 20, what 2003 2013 so 21 years later you remember all of these detailed accounts of everything that happened you got a point that's where it gets tricky with me wax you got a that's point though you with me yeah you got a point you, you shaking the bushes if you didn't remember that night because you blacked out how the hell you remember it's Meg Stallion on steroids. Uh oh, let me mute up. I ain't gonna. <laughs> I'm just saying, 21 years later, you have this detailed account, even from who was sweaty and and uh, and and who said this and who did this and what position they had you in and and you you remember all these things 21 years later after Cassie Falls files a civil lawsuit against him. You, you have great memory of all these things, but claimed they, they fed you a cocktail of different drugs and, 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 and got you so drunk and wasted that you, that you did not consent and that it was rape. And it first began, someone pulled Honey Shakura, shout out to Honey. 
Uh, a lot of details were remembered, but a lot of details. Smoking crack out of a can, that's a lot of details that gets you remembered, you know? Well, well, you claim while sober, Pierre forced your head down in the to his penis while he was smoking crack out of a can. Yeah, yeah. Yo. And then after he forced you to do it, you agreed to get on an airplane the next day and fly out to New York. Where? where, where when, when do you say this dude raped me? Do you, do you say he raped you the uh, the night he uh, made you give him the head? Pro- here goes the problem, Reek. It goes the problem. That's where it get tricky at. The forcible rape don't even have to be proven. As long as it's proven that he had sex with that woman and she was under the age of 18, they got him. That's oh. where it get fucked up. So if you didn't know the age of the person, right? And they don't, you know how many niggas in jail for that, Rick? No, for, for sure. If, but if you didn't know the age of the woman and it wasn't rape, then it was statutory rape because she was under the age, correct? And if the feds grab it, it's a federal rape. And that's who's going to grab it. That's why R. Kelly's in a federal prison for rape right now. Most niggas go to jail for rape, Rick, where they at? They in the state. Yep. Right? R. Kelly's in a federal prison. You know what I'm saying? So let's say they can't prove these details that they, you know, if they can just prove that they in fact had sex, that's the problem. The rape makes it even worse. But the charge is going to come with the act of having sex with her at that age. Okay. So is it safe to say that people are in jail right now for hearsay? No physical evidence to prove Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Geronimo Pratt did 33 years for hearsay before DNA analysis came to be. And they said, oh, now we got a DNA machine that blood wasn't yours 33 years later. Definitely. Right, right. <laughs> like, what you mean? You know, there's some people in jail that's innocent, and there's some people on the street that's guilty. Right. You know, it is what it is. Why you think I made sure R&B was 18? When I checked her ID, she had just turned 18, bro, like two weeks before I got to know. <laughs> Good thing got that cleared up. We already know it has to clear that up, you know? No, it's, it's, it's a good point. And that's why we're playing this audio, because the audio is breaking it down with an attorney. Rosetta, can you finish playing a little bit more of that audio? blackmail it's Mm. bribery i did not do this he's entitled to his day in court the process moving forward he'll file an answer to this there'll be what's called discovery that is the exchange of information i'm assuming there'll be a lot of people deposed meaning ask questions under oath and then ultimately there'll either be a trial or settlement but his side says this is a mere money grab do not believe the hype that's what we're hearing right now joey jackson it's always a pleasure to have you on a pure money grab that's the first thing that they determined when Cassie came with these allegations. Puffy, along with a number of other entertainers, um, have had a lot of wild parties. Um, in the 90s, there's a number of rappers that had allegations of dealing with minors, right? In the 90s, 80s, They didn't make it seem like it was a big thing. 17-year-old groupies trying to get backstage. 16-year-old groupies getting backstage. A lot of entertainers, from musicians to basketball players, would be considered guilty for dealing with women and not knowing their age. Wanting a party party. Right? It's strange that it took one person's voice to come up and say he did this to start all these people coming out from males to females saying that Diddy did this to me. After so many years of being in silence, they didn't think about civil, criminal, or anything like that. All of a sudden, everyone is saying that Diddy did something to him. Diddy may be a number of things, but a rapist, a sodomizer, I, I don't I don't I don't get that I don't get that type of vibe from Diddy. 
does he not use his words properly sometimes does he say things that may come off like a little hey what you talk about yeah he will even admit that he's not good at the pause game right I broke down it yesterday I said they're like well hey man he's calling people daddy now there's males saying that he did something New York people have been using that term in different contexts. Oh, yeah, man, I like that new car. Daddy, I see you, daddy. And, and, and no one ever took it any type of way. I didn't hear Jada Kiss say daddy. I didn't hear Benny Siegel say it. I didn't hear numerous people say it. But now with all these allegations, people are now saying, oh, now it makes sense. Oh, he was saying daddy uh, like, like how your woman called you daddy. So I think a lot of these things is being... Like people are reaching to try to go ahead and put the pieces together. We watched them take R. Kelly. We all sided against them. We all said, oh, yeah, he did all he fouled. The state feds came in. They took his assets. He took all his money. And R. Kelly was gone. We could do the same thing with Diddy. We can go against Diddy and say he's this, he's that. And they come take all his assets. Another wealthy black man out the game because no one took the time to even try to evaluate and try to get a sense of is this people are these people lying or are these people opportunists did these people go for the sexual things because in hopes that they would get a deal hopes that they would be nominated for something hopes that they would get opportunities to make money or was Puff Daddy just a menace with the name that he has where a person could literally get raped and go right to the police station, get the rape kit, be did he rape me, this, that, and the third, be able to show defense marks. Something just doesn't sit right with me. So Ion, you've been you've been hearing and everything that's been going on. What's your honest views of what's going on with Diddy? Do do you do you believe that everything that they're saying to be true? Or do you think some of it's exaggerated? Or do you think some may be true. What's your views on it? Um, in all honesty, I cannot take away and say that Diddy did not do everything. Um, as a person who has... <laughs> I've heard some things. But let's, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about what he's going down for. Like the whole Cassie situation... I saw it I, because, um, you know, I, 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 I kind of know for sure that Cassie was playing the game and that she was into it, too. Like where she was, you know, not only she said it in her court documents specifically that, you know, she was with the shits, that she was basically, um, you know, helping Diddy bring in prostitutes to be raped, too, which is crazy to me <laughs> like that. Like, I don't know. I, I for me in general, I cannot be in a place where no matter how much of a victim I am you know I, how I'm going to bring somebody else into a situation that's in the court documents that's in, that's what she said not me um, to, to, to disconnect him from a lot of the shit especially if this girl was a minor at the time I, I don't fuck with that shit at all I think that people who are celebrities and who are famous and horrible or just men in general should always consistently check IDs they should make sure that women are above age so um, you know that you don't kind of get yourself in the situations Diddy is too famous to be making these stupid ass motherfucking decisions period I also want to say the reason why I cannot I cannot side with Cassie 100% um, I can't side with Cassie because of, of how she you know how her husband was one of the dudes that introduced Diddy that that Diddy introduced to her and now out of nowhere is her husband it's very strange it's very strange um 
But I do think that Diddy, you know, got into some situations. I think that he, you know, was a little bit abusive. I think that he was very disrespectful to, you know, some of these artists and and women out here. And, um, you know, it's just coming back to bite him in the butt. I think that thing got to his head. And I think that he had a godlike complex where he felt personally that he was not untouchable. And you cannot, you cannot do that. I also found it weird uh, uh, that... um, I found it weird that, you know, during the time where he was suing um, that big company that was connected to his liquor brand, you know, that's when, you know, all of this stuff kind of fell apart. Um, And I believe that for me, I believe that if somebody is uh, being if somebody raped or somebody was fucked over or somebody um, was abused, I think that we should stop doing this weird thing where we celebrate civil suits and we start kind of putting people in situations for them to go to jail. If somebody's a rapist and a pedophile, I don't think that civil suits is going to do anything for him but drain his account. Okay. Um, You know, I think it's important, like, if something happened to somebody that you actually take that motherfucker down so that you don't, so that this experience doesn't happen to other people. And that's what kind of triggers me a bit. I mean, I can't tell victims, um, you know, on what they should be doing. But, you know, victims also can't be mad when they took a route of finances and they don't get it, that it does not happen. So Diddy is not a victim in this situation. He is too smart and too, and, and too, and, and too rich to be making decisions like this. And like I said before, I believe that a lot of the shit that he has done is now coming to bite him back in the butt. And uh, uh, now he's seeing a new side of things. Um, and, and I do believe that also the only reason why they investigated him has nothing to do with victims. It has everything to do with him probably have videotapes um, of other people. Right, because um, that's when they started to uh, attack his ass. When um, uh, what is his name, Little Rod, came out and said that he saw tapes of other people, um, you know, of, of different types of celebrities or or different types of powerful people. That's when they started to, um, you know, wanted to raid Diddy's house. And I also wanted to say, even after that, like they're saying that he's not part of this big investigation, like um, that he's just kind of like a pawn in it, um, but that there's other people that they're actually investigating. So. I think that and I also wanted to say this too I want y'all to remember that in Cassie's case I find it weird that she talked about things that happened in in New York and LA and in Miami right where she basically said that she went to the police department and the police department did anything because uh, P. Diddy had ties to that nobody's discussing that so that's how I kind of feel like this is a shakedown um, because they've been new um, right there, there's alleged court documents or police reports that Cassie made from years ago right so why wasn't he taken down then why did they wait to this moment to be able to make that decision and, and I really think it, it this is a power shift so that's my opinion on it I cannot acquit Diddy of being a rapist I cannot acquit um, him of being you know making some of these just stupid decisions but I can side eye some of these victims and how they're coming out not because of, of him just being Diddy and his personality just because you know how this just kind of seems it's like a money grab. Uh, I, uh, have, have you ever been around Diddy? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. And based off you being around Diddy and his personality, do any of these things kind of trigger you where you like, where you kind of can see some of this? Or in your experiences of being around Diddy, he, this don't, this don't, these descriptions and what they're saying does it fit i would say you know i would say that when i met diddy um the few times that i did meet him he was a very you know fairly really nice like dope person like really like you know just kind of cool and fun i also know that at a diddy party we all have to leave at a certain time so that just didn't come from nowhere right um you know that 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 saying you know it, it stem from somewhere personally i have never seen anything that made me think like okay this 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 is some rapey type shit because i I probably would have never met him again but um we have heard stories and and there have been people who come out and have said different types of things um and also i think that a lot of the time it's the entourage that kind of like disrespects the areas um or disrespects um 
disrespects, you know, uh, uh, the situation. And, you know, like, coming from people who, like, uh, a perfect example, like, you know, uh, uh, there are two lawsuits against two different other artists that ended up happening, um, and they said that it happened in Diddy's home. So, you know, to me, he was nice, but to others specifically, um, my smoke, well, well, the story that I for sure know to be true in a situation was more so something that happened of a woman's doing, not what he did. So when I hear it like this interesting, you know, breakdown of how everybody's playing innocent, everybody at the party knows, you know, everybody who is at a, 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 in, in a certain situation knows that at a certain time, you gotta be able to do what you gotta do and get the fuck up out of there because if that's the case, you're gonna get your ass got. Um, and I think that a lot of people, both men and women, stay because they think that that's the ability to have access to something bigger in the world because a lot of people see Diddy as a gatekeeper, see a lot of people as a gatekeeper. And, um, you know, people don't want to be, you know, having those conversations when, you know, there's a few shots or a few drugs or a few things going on. This, these, these become into... They, these become like sex parties. Um, these become parties of, of 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 not you know talking about work. This is about people just wanting to have a good time. So that's just that's I don't know. And, and is there anything wrong with wanting to have a good time? I I I, <laughs> I nothing wrong with wanting to have a good time. But I think that everybody should know what that good time is, and I think that everybody is responsible for. Um, you know, being clear of, of of what that time is about because there is a there is a difference between um, having a good time and and then you know setting somebody up for um, in a position with that they did, that they do not want to be in and feel pressure to have to do that because most parties when you go to a party an Airbnb anything like that and correct me if I'm wrong stage most parties. When men and women go, y'all know it's going to be drink. If you smoke weed, you know it's going to be weed. And you know if y'all turn it up all night, everyone in the hopes of finding somebody that they may vibe with and that you you may get something popping. Like like that's that that's that's common shit for a party. Like you you don't you don't go to a party um, to stand around and and not find something that 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 suits you, right? So if you go to that's a party a you know, you see something that look good, she vibing with you, y'all walking around the mansion, y'all go by the pool, y'all get in, you start smacking, you know what I'm saying? You pat yourself on the back, oh man, it was a good night. Yeah, man, I ran into this little bad bitch, uh, knocked her down, Ooh, like that, that's common shit. Like, like, are we, are, are they gonna persecute Diddy for wanting to have a party? Now, in the allegations of him wanting to deal with males and, and, and women, um, if if he decided to deal with the male, that that's his business. It's not against the law for him to want to deal with both. It's not against the law. Um, but are they simply saying and, and trying to connect and say that because they've been saying that oh man, Diddy, uh, Diddy gay or Diddy's bisexual? Look look at this picture with him and this 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 gay dude. Look at this picture of him and this fashion designer. Look how they hugging. Would, 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 does that does that make him gay by association because he has gay friends? I don't. I don't, what, what? I don't think that's what it is. I I, I I don't think, and I don't want to say too much, but you know there have been men specifically who have come out before Cassie and who have said that they have things have happened to them at Diddy. You know, I'm gonna just say that. You know, I I just I really the gay thing really kind of baffles me because this goes to show you um, to your point, CEO. Um, that nobody nobody cares about victims because once people said, oh, he's gay, like, everybody took that and made it a whole joke. So I don't really believe that this is about trying to see what victims really went through. This is about, this is a shakedown. I was like, oh, nigga, you been gay this whole time? Like, I don't fuck with that. Like, you know, um, but you can rape, though, or you could have all these other things. When it comes down to partying, though, everybody needs to be above 21. Everybody needs to be, uh, 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 um, 
you know a legal age so that if things do go if things do go down we know that you are a responsible adult and that you had the ability to make a choice to where either to, to come or, or, or to leave okay when there are people who are under 21 and i'm i'm gonna say under 21 because i, I really believe that 21 is the age that it should be um even though people think differently that's okay y'all think it's a legal age but i don't feel me personally i don't feel comfortable uh with minors you know drinking at parties um when I was um, at a, a big celebrity party, I, I remember that there was one time where they had their children drinking, um, and I, that made me feel uncomfortable because you never know what could happen um, in this situation. And something ended up happening, and of course, you know, now people are l- looking at everybody's side eye and saying, oh, y'all let kids drink. But the whole party didn't know how old these people were, and, and, and you know, they look like younger men and, and younger women. But now we're all held responsible